Hey, how's it going? So today what we're going to do is check out um, how to make conversions. And what I mean by conversions is how to take something like, uh, for example, 10 inches and how to change that into how many centimeters that would be. Okay? Um, and I'll say right off the top, if you were doing this at home, you probably wouldn't do this method that I'm about to show you. What you would probably do is go to Google, and I'll demonstrate that right now too just for fun. You'd probably go to Google and you'd write 10 centimeters, 2 inches. Just type that in Google. You hit enter, and it, it automatically tells you the answer. You can see it's 3.9 inches. Okay? But what, what I want to do here is just show you how to do this mathematically so that you know what's going on. Because Google does all that in the background. Okay. So what you do, the first step is, is you, the teacher has to give you some kind of a chart. Okay? So you look over on the side here, and I have a chart set up. Now it says inches and it says centimeters. So you look over and you say, where are inches and centimeter, centimeters? Is there anything that has inches and centimeters? And then you notice it's right there. I'll circle it in yellow there. So it says one inch, one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So you just write that down as I'm doing right here. And instead of writing it straight across like they do in the conversion chart, put it in a fraction like this. Okay, so just put one over top of the other. And it doesn't really matter which one you put on top or which one you put on the bottom. As long as you keep things lined up the way I'm about to show you. Okay, let's look back at the question. It says 10 inches. Well, we have to write the 10. We have to put that 10 either on the top or the bottom. Ask yourself right now, do you think that 10 should go on the top or the bottom of this fraction? Okay, if you said the top, then you are right. The reason why it works on the top is because you, you decided, or we decided, to put inches on top over here, on this side. So if you're going to choose inches on this side, you have to keep it on top of the other side. Okay? And the thing that we're trying to find out is how many centimeters that is. So I'm just going to write a little x here. Now. I am going to assume that you've watched the other video that I made earlier, and it's called the Zorro method. And the Zorro method is a really quick way to solve a situation like this, where you know three things and you're trying to find out the fourth thing. And I will, uh, I'll demonstrate it, but I want you to actually learn it uh, by watching my other video called How to Use the Zorro, or it has the word Zorro in it anyway. And uh, so just check that out if you're not sure what I'm doing here. But just to uh, quickly go over it, you circle the part you don't know, and you start there. And you make what looks like a Z, and that's where the word Zorro method comes along. So you go across, you go diagonal, and you go across. All right? So on the journey from the X, the first number you meet, you type it in on your calculator. You go 2.54. You multiply by the number that's diagonal, so you multiply by 10. And then you divide by the last number, and the last number here is 1, so it's not really going to change anything. Okay? Oops. So I'm just going to get my handy dandy calculator here, and I'm going to go 2. There we go. 2.54 times 10, and then you divide by 1. We didn't actually need a calculator for this, did we? Oh well. It's 25.4. Four. And that should be the answer that we get on the internet if we type it in Google. Let's try it out. 10 centimeters to inches. All right. Okay. Like me, you probably noticed uh, that there's a problem here. It says 10 centimeters is that many inches, but what we wanted to know is 10 inches is how many centimeters. So let's uh, let's make this work. 10 inches is 25.4 centimeters. So using Google, we see that it's exactly the same answer that we got using this uh, thing called the Zorro method. Okay, we got 25.4. Let's try this again on one more question, and then if you want to, just push rewind, and you can watch this all over again if you want to. So I, I won't keep going through tens tens of thousands of questions. Okay, so here we go. I'll do this one in pink. So here we have 350 pounds is how many kilograms? Okay, do you remember the first step? 
the first step is to look over on this chart and say, do you see any relationship between pounds and kilograms here? Well, let's keep looking. There it is. Okay? So you start by writing this as a fraction right here. One kilogram is 2.2046 pounds. All right. So on the other side, we look at what they gave us in the question. It says 350 pounds. Where should that 350 go? On the top or the bottom? Well, you have to go back over here and say, which side had pounds? One kilogram. So kilograms are on top. And pounds are on the bottom. So you're going to take the 350 pounds and write them on the bottom of this side. Okay? Now we have the X on top over here. And we're going to use that Zorro method again. <clears throat> so the Zorro method says you start, start at the part you don't know, go across, diagonal and across. The first two numbers that you meet, you multiply. Okay? So you're going to go 1 times 350, and then you're going to divide by 2.2046. And that's where a calculator is really handy for this one, because that's a tough one to do in our head. So let's get the calculator back here. And uh, let's type it in. 1 times 350, of course it's just 350. There we go. And then we divide by 2.2046. And we end up getting 158 point, I'm going to round it off, so 158.8. 158.8. And remember, the answer is in pounds, because on the bottom we have pounds, or sorry, in kilograms. <laughs> on kilograms because on top we have kilograms. And there it is. Let's check if Google agrees with us here. So I'm going to type in I'm going to type in 350 pounds to kilograms. If I hit enter, 158.8 kilograms. Um, a lot of cell phones nowadays also have the ability to do all these kinds of conversions as well. So there's many ways to do them. Uh, what, I, what I just showed you is a way to do it mathematically. So if your teacher says you have to show your work, you're not going to get full marks by jumping on your cell phone, of course, and uh, getting the answer that way. But it's still a good idea to know how to find that, because this is something that could be used in everyday life. Okay? Thanks for watching.